Hello, beautiful souls. This is Masami. I hope you are doing well and enjoying this beautiful and amazing August. It's been quite powerful as many of you have been reaching out to me and expressing that to me. Thank you for all your emails and comments. I really do appreciate them. And if you are not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do so by clicking the button says subscribe, because I am trying to decrease the amount of emails you receive so that the maybe you can just come on YouTube when I put the videos up instead of having to receive the emails and then checking out the YouTube channels. So I hope that will help with your inbox a little bit. And let's do get started on the new moon, this micro new moon uh, in Leo that is happening this Wednesday. And before I go into that, and I will talk about that a lot here, I wanted to just take a moment and reflect on this period right now, which is probably my favorite time of the month. What that means is that this is the dark moon period where two, three days, you know, usually about two, three days, sometimes a little bit shorter than that. But there's this period of time that the the moon is waning and waning and it becomes basically no more reflections of the sun coming through. So this is the period that is called the dark moon and it's different than the new moon. The dark new moon and new moon, you do not want to mix those up because they are energetically quite different. So the dark moon is the ending energy and you guessed it, the new moon is the beginning energy, the lunar cycles starting. So let's go back to the dark moon because that's where we're at right now. That's when I'm recording this. And then this month's August dark moon has been just so powerfully healing for me. And I've been spending some time alone up in the mountains. I've been hiking every single day and just kind of quietly speaking to the forests and the the birds and rocks and the little wildflowers all over the place and really feeling a sense of the cycle ending. And today when I'm recording this, which is August 15th in 1945, this was the day that Emperor Hirohito announced the end of the war. So this is considered to be the Memorial Day in Japan for the end of the war. That's what we call it in Japan. And it's the victory day for the for those of us in the United States. So it's this kind of a, a sense of surrender because it is a surrendering of Japan in World War II. But it's this sense of kind of release that is happening. And that's also happening during this dark moon. And I'm just going to add a little bit of um, commentary here about what's going on all over the globe. So what's been going on in Maui and the just heartbreaking fire and also so many flooding that is going on in Europe, Norway, um, China, parts of China. There was this massive flooding in Japan also. And as you know, in parts of the United States and all over the world. And there are parts of the world like Sudan and Ethiopia's have been experiencing so much dryness and they have not gotten enough rain that nothing is growing. There's just so much going on in this world. And I do have, I have taken several pages of notes, actually just kind of an intuitive note taking, writing, speaking within myself. And I wrote this down around what's been going on, but particularly with the fire that occurred in Maui and this devastation that is continuing. But I am going to choose to wait to speak about that until my heart says it's ready and it may not be ready for a long time and it may not be necessary for me to speak about it. I do feel that there, there are many things that I can discuss around this particular topic, but I also, someone that's experienced earthquakes in Japan and lost our home, our family home, lost childhood memories and lost my own father in that earthquake. 
two earthquakes in my hometown. I do not want to see any videos or any commentary on people outside of Maui discussing this and talking about it, even from the spiritual perspectives, even from the intuitive perspectives, maybe in different things that they're channeling or whatnot. I don't want to add to that. So I just wanted to make a side note here because as somebody that has experienced tremendous losses in my life too, and not knowing whether my mother, my father, my brother, my you know friends were okay or not for days. And for weeks, I couldn't go back because there were no ways to go back because the trains couldn't even get to my hometown. The airport was shut down. Um, you know, I think what I want to do during this dark moon period, particularly in into this new moon, that I want to open my heart fully using this Venus retrograde as the time to crack open my heart and send the love quietly, respectfully. That's what I'm going to choose to do. And, you know, I think it's individually you can decide. Obviously, people are posting a lot of things. I just want you to know that I have received a couple of emails from those of you that are still looking for your cousins and your aunts and uncles and your family members, immediate family members and friends in Maui in particular right now. So I'm going to choose to hold the space quietly, but with openness in my heart. So I wanted to mention that before I go into it. Coming back to the dark moon for a little bit here, you know, we're so used to looking ahead and forecasting and estimating what's going to happen in the future. So taking this invitation prior to new moon and drop down into the space of stillness and silence is the key to really maybe growing up as who we are as spirits and as human beings and as soul beings here. And also, I always think of Viktor Frankl's quote, he said, between stimulus and response lies a space. In that space lies our freedom and power to choose a response. In our response lies our growth and our happiness. So I am choosing to stay in that space that is between stimulus and response. And that's what dark moon period is all about. So please bring this energy into this new beginning that is coming this week for all of us. And I see that the dark moon invites us to that space, right? Between the waxing and waning, adding and removing, doing and being. It's just this. It's just this. It's neither of those things and can hold both also. So hopefully you can do some of that. And that's the energy that, that we want to tap into this dark moon energy into right now as we welcome the new moon in Leo. So please don't just kind of live your life without having some of the stillness and then boom, there's new moon and you're gonna start writing your wishes and you know, next beginning, and then here comes the new cycles, but ending things is so important. So this is my last commentary on the dark moon period is that just as a play by Shakespeare says, it was a title of a, a play. It's called All's Well That Ends Well. Entering into the new phase of this new moon by taking some quiet reflective time can be quite healing to our system especially when many of us live in the world driven by progress, future thinking, and forecasts. So that's what I have there about the dark moon, the importance of that, and my decision not to put the video up right now. Maybe it'll come, maybe not, I don't know, about the devastation and the sadness I deeply feel for those of you that are in Maui in particular right now. And I'm going to move on to the new moon in Leo now. 
And like as I said at the beginning of this video, this is the micro new moon, and this is the only micro new moon of 2023. So it's really important that letting this new moon help you to dive much, much deeper. I would say even to the cellular level. So paying attention to the micro details, maybe little nuances, maybe new shifts, like a little, little shifts. So it's not this massive shifts, micro subtle things. See if you could find those things. And I love doing that, particularly when I'm up in the mountains and I get to go down to the, to the ground and look at these little, little wildflowers. They're not these massive flowers, right? They're these tiny little things that you have to get down to their level in order to really see the details. So that's kind of what this micro new moon is inviting us to do is to come back down. Maybe if you have little kids or, you know, grandkids, your own children, you want to do this every time, but even more so during this micro new moon to come down to their eye level, see what they see, hear what they hear, and what are they noticing at their level? And um, it's a very healing to the micro level, cellular level kind of a week. And remember, this new moon energy will carry into, I suspect, and let me, let me muscle test that, but Friday, yeah, I feel it till Friday. That's where I get yes on. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I will muscle test doing something like this. So you might see me doing a couple of these things coming up with my hands. I'm muscle testing that. But until Friday, Friday evening, um, the new moon energy is going to carry on. So it's a great time to pay attention to the cellular level things. So if you have been wanting to dive deeper into the cellular healing, this week is a good time to focus on that. And I would also pay attention to what cells are made out of and how to feed the cells, how to nourish the cells. So cells are made out of many different things, but particularly they're made out of fatty acids. So eating good quality fatty acids, omega-3, saturated fats, omega-6s, good seed oils to really good butter, to having some flaxseed oils that the, you can use it as like, I like it capsules better. And if you have questions about the fatty acids that the, I take, I take sunflower seed oil. I also take evening primrose oil. I take black currant seed oil. I use the top of the top. So if you have any questions about that, you can always post comments. I will respond, or you can email us through our website, masamikavi.com. And I'll put the link of that website below as well. And what nourishes the cells? Let's go into that just a little bit more. So the fatty acids are very important. Digesting the fatty acids, very important. Also using receptor detox, which is a supplement that I use that clean out the receptor sites on the cellular membrane. So the extra, extra areas of the cells, they need to be cleaned out from heavy metals, toxicity, memories, um, maybe karmic looping, maybe different ancestral things that you've picked up the different elements of things that are just stagnant, they can really make your cells sticky and clogged up. So I do use the supplement called Receptor Detox. And you can uh, learn about that by going to masamikavi.com, my website. I have um, information on there too, and we've done some videos there. I will actually link the video for Receptor Detox here also. And good amino acids. So getting good animal proteins, vegetable protein, getting good sourced protein, key. And digesting, not using hydrochloric acid, I use the HCL Complete from Zorex. You could get that information from my website as well. And also B vitamins. As you know, I'm a huge fan of B vitamins. All B vitamins. Love them, love them, love them. And I'm sure I'll be talking about more about the B vitamins in the coming months as well. And minerals like zinc, magnesium, which I just did the video on magnesium last time. So you can take a look at that. Boron, I love using boron for many, many things, especially to balance my hormones as I'm in post-menopause now. And phytonutrients help protect and repair cells from damage. So I love using that, especially something like resveratrol. And for those of you that are in the Venus Retrograde program, I posted the resveratrol that I love using. So you can take a look at that there. And this new moon in Leo is very important in terms of reflections. It's a good week to review the events that happened in 2007 and 2015, okay? Those two times, maybe go back to your journals, maybe go back to your calendar and take a look. 
but take a look at around the Leo time. So July, August, early September, what was going on around that time, 2007 and 2015? What life lessons did you receive from these two major periods in your lifetime? And really reflect on that and see, you can maybe see how much you've grown there. And believe it or not, this is something I have really intuitively felt and wanted to share this with all of you is that we are growing up. We are actually elevating. We are actually progressing to a better elevated space. But this is why we need to reflect on how much we have grown and how much we have learned as individually, but also collectively. So please do take the time to review, particularly those two time periods that I've shared here. It's important during this new moon period to define your also abilities and limitations as well that you learned from 2007 and 2015 and what you're learning, learning currently. What are your abilities? What can you really get done? What are you good at? What are you excited about? What makes you joyful and happy? And where you learn, what, what areas of your life you feel like, you know what, I could use some help because that's my limitations or yeah, that area, I need somebody to guide me through this. I need to look for some support in that. Or maybe there are areas that you can open up more, maybe you could share more. So take a look at all those things and take a look at what you've learned in those two periods, as well as currently what you have learned so far, particularly during the Venus retrograde time. And we'll be doing a little bit more of the deep dive on the new moon call that I'll be doing on Wednesday for those of you who are in the Venus retrograde program. And if you're so interested in joining, please do, because I have been posting a lot and I just posted how to take care of your skin today on a video for those of you who are in that program. So please check that out as well. I'll put the link below as well. And let's look at Venus retrograde in Leo briefly, because it does matter to this new moon. It This new moon is a micro new moon. So you do go into the cellular level, but it does open up the deepest level of your heart center and ignites the fire in there. It puts the fire, just kind of like a furnace turns on kind of a thing, okay? And maybe some of you have seen those like a gas fireplace, you know, where there's a switch and you need to turn on the switch and then the fire goes, the fake fire, but they go up and it turns on. It's kind of like that, it really ignites it. And, you know, the Leo time is the time when you want to like roar from the inside. It may not be as loud of the roar during this new moon because it's the micro new moon, but you will certainly feel that fire getting ignited from the deepest part of who you are. So pay attention to that. And in order to really see that and feel that and listen to that fire, you wanna quiet down deeply, okay? And really feel into that deep feeling that is big, big feelings, like deep, deep and big, big level of joy and grief and sadness, but love. Like don't shy away from these big, deep feelings. And it's not always about joyfulness. It's not, life isn't always about joyful. There's so much pain in this world and you may feel that at the deepest level but you can also heal that deepest sadness and grief during this period. That's what's beautiful. The universe doesn't just give you sadness and grief that is so massive. It always provides you with ways to heal that. And so I find this week to be so powerful beyond imagination. And I'm so grateful the universe has given us that. And look, guess what? The sun's coming through. So I was doing it in my living room and I wasn't sure if my lighting was good or not here, but the sun is coming through. So I think you could see me better now. During this time, you will also be shown that we don't always have to keep doing things the way that we have in the past. But you wouldn't know how you've been doing things in the past 
unless you take some time to reflect. That's why the dark moon is important before you get into the new moon also. So use this whole week with those both energies, okay? So it's not just like a new moon, okay, I'm get, I, get to get, I get to get started new. But it's time to kind of balance both the reflection and the new, okay? And I do think that the, during this new moon, hold space for your bright future that comes from the microscopic scopic level of you might be tiny seed that gets planted it's little steps really the universe is asking us little steps one word one paragraph one letter maybe one phone call one step at a time to hike up right i hike up this 10,000 foot area and it's one step at a time one step at a time you can't i can't get there unless i take one foot in front of the other so Really look at that as how do I create this bright future by taking little step, little step, little step. It's a fresh start is coming, but please don't, don't squander this time of beautiful reflection that, that we've been given this week. And this week, I do think that some of us towards the end, I, I sense it's more like a Friday into this weekend that some of the awareness around finance and money definitely is going to come up, okay? But please don't approach this with fear. Approach this with this fresh new beginning. This is the new start. And clear out some misunderstandings around finance, maybe with others, but also within yourself. Maybe there's some misunderstanding around finance, around your life. So, all right, well, that's kind of what I have for you. I have so much more to share, but um, I think this is enough in terms of plenty for you to maybe go through this week with. I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful for you, please subscribe to this channel and please give me the thumbs up. I love seeing that. It does mean something to me that it's positive for me, I have to say. And it really gives me kind of this like uplifting feeling, but also helps me to go, okay, maybe what I'm putting out there is helpful. And maybe I want to put more out there. So it's a motivator for me as well. So I look forward to seeing your comments and let me know if you have any questions. Visit my website, masamikavi.com. We have a lot of interesting things up there, including supplement recommendations and how to order them and so on and so forth. So check that out. Until next time, I will see you through soon. And please, let's all of us take a moment to send just massive amount of love and healing and light towards so many people who are struggling right now, especially with natural disasters that are going on all across the globe. Thank you. Namaste.